seeing our screen saver though. Uh, uh, wait, 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 My youth is sleeping. Uh, so no pressure, no pressure. You, I will give you the chair. I'm just here to disturb you. You all realize that, right? I'm giving you three seconds to start talking. Wait, wait. Three Where's the... Two. Oh, display. You are wasting the one minute your friend donated to you, yo! Wait, no one donated to me! <laughs> <laughs> High pressure. Oh yes, I'm supposed to donate to you. Mira! The recording has begun and so has the timer. Good luck, uh, friend! Uh, okay, Good okay. luck! Okay, okay. Yay. Give all of you buffer anyway, right? I think he is fine. Right, yay. Hi, um, um, good evening to everyone. My name is Ben, and I'm a web developer uh, in the Shopee front end team. Yes. So today I'll be talking to you about my learning in public journey, which is actually not very long. It started in uh, this July, and it's mostly about me drawing nonsensical stuff in CSS. But I did um, one talk in React uh, Hooks, although it's also building something nonsensical. So I will make this very personal. It's mostly about what difficulties I have during the journey and um, subsequently also about what learning in public actually means to me. So as someone who is um, socially awkward, I have a lot of challenges. And uh, um, the first thing that came to my mind when I started to try learning in public is that what I'm building is totally useless. And it is because the first thing that I shared publicly in Talk CSS this July is about me drawing an anime character. And it's not going to save the world. So, but when you are sharing about learning, when you are sharing about learning, it's not just about the thing that you are building. It's about what you learn during the building process. So with that, um, while my evil side say, ah, oh, it's useless, my not so evil side say, then let it be useless. Um, and derive joy from building something useless because you don't get that chance to do that anywhere else, especially in your work. So, um, and the second thing is that I'm scared. Okay, I have stage fright. Okay, even now, <laughs> even now, I'm scared. So the thing is, I know that the the, the fear is not going to go away. Um, I can't wait for the fear to disappear completely before I actually step on the stage. So my answer to that is that yes, the thing is not to be scared. No, the thing is not to not be scared. The thing is to be scared and do it anyway. Yep. So that's my answer to this. Um, how about what if? Um, I don't have much to talk about. For this problem, what I think is that when you're standing on the stage, it's half about what you are talking about, and the other half is actually about you. So people who come to your talk, to your sharing, they are not just caring about what you are, the topic that you are speaking. It's they, they want to know more about you as a person. So if you think about that that way, if your mindset is that way, then as long as you, you choose to step on the stage, you're halfway there. Okay. So, um, but the, this is all optimistic and all, but um, apart from the preparation, once you're on the stage already, things might still go wrong. And um, you might also feel that you're not experienced enough to talk about the topic. For example, um, regarding the ReactJS, I was like a total novice in it. So um, I think um, if I'm to be geeky about this, I'll say something along the lines of the future is independent of the past given the present. <laughs> okay, uh, my point here is that however in inexperienced you are in the topic, actually nobody needs to know. <laughs> nobody cares actually. So the, the point is to make the talk, the present, as good as you can to research as much as you can for, for that specific talk. Um, let's digress a bit uh, and, and talk about my latest talk um, in public, uh, which I, I was sharing about this totally useless man dancing the moonwalk on the stage, um, controlled by Red Hooks. And because this, this was the, f the second time that I gave this specific uh, talk about this project, so I wanted to make it different, and I tried to do the moonwalk during the talk, <laughs> and the moment I reached the location, I realized that my biggest fear materialized because the floor was made of carpet. Oh. And there is, no way, there is no way you can do a moonwalk on a carpet floor because there's too much friction. 
So there were two options. Either I scrap the whole dance or I would dance without my shoes on because luckily I had my socks. Yeah, so that's what happened. Don't worry, I'm not going to play the video. It's just a screenshot on Twitter. <laughs> I'm not going to play the video. It's em embarrassing. So my point here is that um, I, I tend to compare myself to a comedian every time I learn in public. Because what I think is that um, my goal is that no matter, like I might be a total loser at like any other day in my life, but once I, I get on the stage, I'll give you a good demo show. So, um, yes, uh, but this is like all optimistic, but I haven't really shared with you what learning in public is really to me. And to answer this question, let me tell you a story about the jellyfish. I know it, it looks like a sotong, but just pretend <laughs> it's a jellyfish. <laughs> okay, just pretend it's a jellyfish. But the thing is, the jellyfish is a very interesting um, creature. So my journey with jellyfish is uh, a bit long with it, but it's something like this. My friends were in my house and they were having fun, and for some reasons I need to do my homework. And uh, um, because they didn't feel my presence at all behind them. So uh, uh, once they are done, they turned around and saw me and said, when did you get in the room? And I was like, maybe I should just go to the ocean and turn myself into a jellyfish. Because the jellyfish is a, is, um, is a creature which has no brain, no heart, and somewhat they are almost transparent. So, so in the water, it's very hard to spot them. Um, but this, this, I realized when I searched about jellyfish, there's something that's called an immortal jellyfish. So how does it link to me being a developer? How can I feel some some um, relation to it? Uh, the first, let, let's talk about how this jellyfish is is immortal. Um, so the jellyfish have two <laughs> <laughs> The jellyfish have two typical stages. Um, the polyp stage is where it actually reproduces asexually, so it creates clones of itself. And the modusa stage is um, a more mature stage of it, and uh, after a few months, the modusa will become able to reproduce sexually. But I think it's the, the species that is considered the immortal jellyfish can revert from the modusa stage back to the polyp stage. So in extremely stressful environments, it can reverse the growth and become an infant. So how does it link to us being a jelly? No, uh, Me. being developers. <laughs> <laughs> how does this link to us being a developer? Um, you can get this idea of the, the immortal jellyfish being different from how we view immortality in uh, media nowadays, whereby people try to age as graciously as possible, um, stay as young for as long as possible. But the, the way of the jellyfish, um, the, uh, the way of the jellyfish is actually not to lengthen its lifespan, but to renew itself continually. And I think that's a very important idea because as developer, we are in the age where um, technologies and methodologies change um, in a yearly basis. So when I was uh, um, computer science student um, in NUS, basically one year you can say that um, you should separate HTML, separate um, CSS and JavaScript into different parts. And then AngularJS came about and put JavaScript inside HTML and then the next year React happened and then do the exact opposite to put HTML into JavaScript. So because um, methodologies change very frequently, we need to be able to not just relearn what we learn, but also unlearn what we have learned. So in order to do that, one way is to meet other people so that you, you get to hear their ideas and also think about why people think similarly or differently from us. And of course, it's cool to sit behind a screen and watch YouTube videos. But if you go to conferences, meet real people, then you get instant feedback, you get instant ideas. Um, and as I was drawing in CSS, and I was thinking that I kind of overuse whatever I have learned already. I started to think, um, how do I learn from people? So I asked people to let me draw them. And um, the cool thing is that everyone looks different. So I can have the liberty. <laughs> uh, yes, this, this on the right side is me, by the way. So I have the liberty to 
cartoonize them to make them look like anime characters and because they look very different um, it kind of pushed my boundaries every time I draw someone different but of course my first specimen is myself and the thing is um, oh that ring is left there is a, is a bug okay. um, <laughs> it's not a feature it's a bug and, okay, so, so this is um, my own portrait the thing is this is not um, how it came about the first time I tried drawing in CSS so the good thing about learning public is that um, when you have the motivation to continually um, make progress and share with the world, then it's more fun to compare your before and after. So my before and after is like this. Um, it looks like someone else entirely, but yeah, that, uh, the left side is when I, I first tried to draw in CSS and the catalyst that enabled me to draw the one on the right is actually just this tool whereby it helps you to visualize how to customize um, the border radius with maximum eight values. And these two alone was a game changer for me. It allows me not to just draw this or the four people, but it allowed me to, to draw much more. And, and these are all enabled by that tool alone. So, um, well, to be honest with you, right now I don't really have an idea of what I should do next. Um, I can't overuse this uh, eight values of border radius for quite a few months now. But just maybe I should just find an ocean and turn myself into a jellyfish. Thank you.